performer this year. Played early his football at uh, Fitzroy and Hobart. As Morris, centre square. Looks as if he's now playing on the back line. Goes towards centre half forward. A pack of players. It's Kicker who really can't control it. It's a red-headed Daniels coming in for his second game for the season. In turn across to Winmar who's got space. What can Nicky Winmar do? He goes short in the direction of Lockett. And he looks a better player, Tim, I believe, when he does move, Tony Lockett. A much better player when he's moving and providing that lead up the ground. But he, he has been intent this year on, on going back and just outbusting his opponent. And on that occasion... I think he would have led with a lot of confidence knowing that Nicky was, he was on the end of a Nicky Winmar's path. The last couple of weeks, Winmar has been predictable when he goes in the forward line. He does kick it long. But on that occasion, he decided to go short to Lockett. And Tony Lockett, as I said earlier, that mark should have been bread and butter. This goal should be bread and butter for the big fellow. Number four, a number made famous by Barry Breen. Goes goalward, and he's kicked it. That goal was created by a wonderful bit of play from Jason Daniels on the wing who's picked up Chris Mainwaring. He fought hard to win the ball, got around a couple of players and then spotted Nicky Wimmer out of the corner of his eye to set up that pass to Lockett. And Daniels is, was a youngster with a lot of potential, has been in the doldrums for the, possibly the last couple of seasons. And hopefully if he gets a bit of confidence, he's a very good player, Jason Daniels. Back flank, centres the ball. The kick is good to Harvey. Harvey goes short. This is Vitovic. Plenty of options now for the Saints. Vitovic's hand pass wasn't bad. Some Kilda mounting an attack as they work the ball into the forward line. Burke took that mark at full stretch. Waiting for the lead from Lockett. He's got two on him. Lockett, here he comes. But Burke ignores that. Actually goes backwards. Loses quite some considerable distance. And Kilda once again trying to mount the ball into their forward line. Burke with another opportunity. Favours the left foot. Goes into Lockett who marks. Out came Plugger. Stretched and took it. I don't think Brennan thought that uh, Burke was going to go in short then because he stood off Lockett. And Lockett was just able to get hands to the ball. It was an amazing bit of play then the way they set that up. They were going to go forward. It was too static in their forward line, so they elected to take the ball back out towards the centre, and then they came back into their forward line, hoping that there'd be a little bit more movement. Lockett had 91 goals before the start of this game, coming in to kick 93 for the season. 30 metres out, almost directly in front. No mistake, goal to St Kilda. Very difficult for Tony Lockett to contend with not only his opponent but the Ruckman dropping back there. When the ball was slowed up and they were moving the ball in there very slowly, they had to look at another avenue. They took the ball back out, brought it back in when there was a little bit more movement and Lockett was able to get clear. Clear only as far as Winmar has time to have a look and kick it long down in the low direction who leaps and is held. Jakovic hanging on to low, and they can ill afford to do that the West Coast at this stage. It's great to see umpires prepared to pay those free kicks, Tim, as a lot of it goes on. I don't know what your opinion of it is. Well, it. the old firm is back in business. Low to Lockett. And all Lockett needs is a couple of metres, and they have a very good understanding, these two. And unerring accuracy. Sees the ball just out in front of Tony Lockett and Plugger is able to take the mark. He's got a couple. He's going to be kicking from about 35 metres out. The angle shouldn't worry him greatly. The distance certainly won't. Tony Lockett. There's the kick. Crowd like it. Umpire likes it. Goal to St Kilda. Tony Lockett. A very dangerous player on the lead. I think that the reason why he doesn't lead as often as he should is because of his fitness, really. I think he gets tired very quickly and then elects to stay back in the 10-yard square. But when he's leading, he's a very dangerous player. Michael Abbott, the umpire with the ball. Bottom of the pack, picked up by Winmar. 
St Kilda mount yet another attack as they go up towards half forward. Low underneath the ball. Tries to trap it. Warsfold goes back. Burke uses the foot cleverly. So too does Hart. Back comes low though. Good use of the hand pass to kick it to Winmar. Winmar, long kick in towards full forward. Oh, lock it! Oh, did he use his body well then or what? Well, you see there Michael Brennan appealing, but the umpire Peter Cameron won't have a bar of it. Now, I'd agree with Peter Cameron because he isn't frightened of paying those three kicks where the player uses his hands or push out. We'll watch this on replay. Well, I don't think there was much of a push there. You know, I'm a bit critical of the way sometimes Lockett gets his kicks, but he certainly earned that one. Lockett has got three goals. Coming in for number four. 20 metres out directly in front. There's the Lockett kick. Goal to St Kilda. And once again, it was Nicky Winmar pushing that ball forward. It carried it just far enough for Tony Lockett to be in the perfect position to get it out from there. But I just wonder whether or not the West Coast Eagles have done enough to try and shut down Nicky Winmar and Harvey, who have been absolute prime movers for the St Kilda side. Yeah. St Kilda are about there, starting to get away now. At almost 35 possessions, and Robert Harvey's almost had 30, and those two players really have chopped up the West Coast Eagles. Well, it's a static line as Danny Frawley's looking for options. These players really can't pull their feet out of the muddy conditions now. It's gone, football's really gone back to basics. You hear the umpire play on as Russell Morris endeavoured to play on around the mark. Nothing coming for Morris, so in turn he goes in towards the centre. It's a high kick. Nobody can control it. Grant will run onto this. Chip off the ground. Burke, who really does put himself in front. Across to Bowie. What can they do, St Kilda? It looks promising. Coglin running into it. Low off the ground. Hart off the ground in turn. The stronger kick and the ball will be relieved by that boundary line through the agency of David Hart. Well, the West Coast Eagles doing a very good job then to take that ball out of bounds. Tony Lockett had stayed back in the goal square waiting for the kick off the ground. Brennan had left him to go up to and make the play. They're very lucky that the ball didn't get to Lockett. Well, Lockett used his bulk superbly to take the ball out of the pack and bang it through for a goal. Well, that was sheer strength then by Tony Lockett to edge his opponent out of the play and then swing around with a wet ball. That's not easy to do, to position the wet ball correctly to kick and bend it back around the corner. But Tony Lockett with five goals, and that's an excellent contribution in these conditions. Against Footscray, and there he is once again, Harvey. He's done particularly well. 31 kicks today, Robert Harvey. Ball centre wing, a high one in towards the centre. Blue pot. There he is, Winmar once again, another stat. Locker. Actually, he pushed, I thought he pushed Brennan into that ball and took the mark. That was superb play then by Locker because that ball that was kicked by Nicky Winmar wasn't floating particularly well. It was a hard one to judge, and Locker judged it perfectly. Well, Lockett has got 96 goals. I think time may well be running out for him to get the 100 today. I'm sure West Coast Eagles supporters will be delighted to hear that. He's going to have this shot from about 45 metres out. He has five. There's the Lockett kick. Goal umpire likes it. Crowd like it. Six goals to Lockett. And Nicky Winmar getting a break. There's little wonder he's been a magnificent player here today. With 40 possessions he's almost had. And he's been a superstar, as has Robert Harvey. And the Secure players then setting that play up from the half back line with a couple of handballs, finding a, a player on his own and creating that play all the way down the field and Lockett finishing it off. So it's been all St Kilda as the torpedo punt kick comes up towards the 50 metre line. With a lovely pick up that time uh, by St Kilda as they work the ball up to Lockett who marks again. Well, that was just sheer class and strength from Tony Lockett. With a minute 59 remaining, Lockett coming in for his 98th goal for the season. That was strength from behind. He 
He's almost directly in front. And I'd suggest of all the shots that Tony Lockett has had today, this is probably the easiest. He has six. If he gets this, it will be seven. Lockett from about 20 metres out. Almost directly in front. Stuttering run, there's the kick. Goal umpire makes a lot of distance to his right, but it's OK. John, you must have been an amazing mathematician at school. Six goals in one more makes seven. That's absolutely right. <laughs> well, he does have trouble, Tim, once he gets past five. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> past nice. ten, he's run out of fingers, so he's in real trouble when he's got his shoes on. <laughs> That was a good kick then by Coglin to sort of weight the ball on Lockett's side. He led on Brennan for a great mark.